Okay, things are getting bonkers with how NVIDIA's DLSS is integrating into games. Things that seem like they could be completely out of hand, we're gonna dig into it and we'll see if they really are. Now, NVIDIA announced these things yesterday at CES. You know, we live streamed this reaction and throughout this entire presentation, NVIDIA didn't mention gamers even once. And they mentioned AI, just saying the word AI 192 times. Just insane. Now I do want to say that AMD with their CES presentation actually beat out NVIDIA. They hit over 300 AIs throughout their presentation. We're entering this era of Yana scale computing. Dude, that's the last the one on there. more powerful models everywhere will require a thing. massive increase in the amount of compute in the world. They did it. Now suffice to say, NVIDIA did step back and do a gaming presentation a little bit later. It's actually midnight my time, so they really weren't putting it at the priority. I want to cover DLSS 4.0 five because this will affect us how our games look how our games feel now the first thing i want to mention and this will be a separate video from me but they did introduce some improvements to their super resolution model if you guys remember last year with dlss 4 not 4.5 they did introduce a newer generation of super resolution that makes upscaling look better most people were happy about with how dlss 4 looks i like it it looks nice and sharp and doesn't really have that many flaws but this year they're actually introducing a new version of that i did some quick and dirty testing the stability over there is a lot better what the hell what i found is that it looks very good actually but you do get a little bit of a performance hit which is the same thing that a lot of the content creators that are at CS have said. The new model is slightly more expensive than the previous one. They, I think the quoted figure was like two to 3%. We'll see when we actually test it out ourselves. So this is a cool improvement that deserves me looking into it more, but really what we're talking about today is the whole frame generation situation. Six times frame generation. Like what? what the hell is happening at this point. So it seems like we're just gonna keep generating frames and we're gonna forget about making the games run well. Because why do that when you could just generate as many frames as possible? Now, I can't deny that this is pretty neat that this exists, but throughout all of 2025, when they introduced four times and three times frame generation last year, I've struggled to find real use cases for these really high generated frames because they come with a lot of caveats. That's because frame generation inherently, it's interpolating two frames. So it needs a frame that is already rendered by the game. And then it holds the next frame that would be shown to you so that it can generate what would go in between it. You're going to get more latency because you would be seeing the next frame in the game. And how they try to mitigate this is by using their reflex low latency technology. The thing is, you don't need to use frame generation in order to also utilize NVIDIA reflex. So you're not really saving anything on latency. In fact, you're always increasing how much latency frame generation is going to be adding. Another issue with frame generation, especially as you go up towards three times and four times. Yeah, maybe your FPS number looks higher and amazing and stuff like, ooh, big number better. When you break it down, you end up getting even more latency than you would have thought. So I just something in Black Myth Wukong, we're at 4K at cinematic settings on the 5090. As you can see in the top left corner of the screen, right about 60 FPS, you know, pretty decent frame rate. This game, this game is so demanding. Then we hop into the graphics settings and then we enable frame generation. We got two times frame gen, 60 FPS base, and then we double that frame rate. We would logically be getting 120 FPS around in there. But when we do turn on two times frame generation, you can see that we only get a little over 100 FPS. So it's not really doubling the frame rate. And something that really like made this stand out for me is you look at the top of the screen. This is actually the Steam overlay and they can show you what frame rate is being generated by frame generation and what frame rate is the base frame rate for the game. This clearly shows that our FPS, our base frame rate decreases if we use frame generation. That means we don't get a theoretical double of what we would have been getting. Game would look smoother, but yeah, we're not getting as responsive an experience because generated frames don't react to the game engine at all. You actually noticed also too, on the left side of the screen, I have a latency measurement. That one also increases just by turning on frame generation. Part of that is because frame generation is on, but then the other part is because now our base frame rate is lower. If we're getting about 54 FPS base with two times. We go up to times four generation. And you're gonna see that the situation gets even worse. We're barely even getting 50 FPS as a base, and now we're going up to 200, which is sick. Yeah, 200 
FPS of smoothness, but our game responsiveness just decreased even more. You can see our latency also increased by a few milliseconds. That also means because there's less base frame rate to work with, that the image quality is also going to be worse. It's not like it's terrible or anything like that, but it's not exactly ideal. So it leaves you in a tough spot trading responsiveness for game smoothness. It actually gets worse the lower end your GPU is, because right now we're on the RTX 5090, literally as good as a gamer can get. It's gonna be able to handle the frame generation pretty well. But when you hop over to like lower end cards, even with this multi-frame generation from the newest generation of GPUs from Nvidia, it struggles more and more as the GPU gets weaker and weaker. And that could be for multiple reasons. It could be because of overall memory capacity on the GPU, like the lower end cards, like the 5060 and stuff. They only have eight gigabytes of VRAM and the generated frames does tend to use a little bit more VRAM on the GPU, but also just the overall AI performance on these cards gets worse and worse down the stack. So that means you're compromising more and more of your base frame rate and your base latency in order to utilize these generated frames. This feature becomes more and more niche because only the high-end GPUs can take advantage of it. Yet yeah, it's kind of advertised like every single GPU in this 50 series generation can use multi-frame gen and get, you know, 4090 performance or whatever NVIDIA wants to say, but that's not really true at the end of the day. And another layer to this is you start generating so many damn frames, you got like 240 FPS or something if you were to go from 60 to 240 with four times frame gen. Do you have enough monitor refresh rate to see how many frames it's pumping out. Because every generated frame does not add to the system responsiveness, so there's literally no point in pushing your frame rate above what your monitor can show you. There's a bunch of layers to multi-frame gen that makes it more and more niche. You need a high-end GPU, you need a high refresh rate monitor, you need a good enough base frame rate that it really doesn't seem as useful as Nvidia likes to make it out to be. But now they're coming out with six times frame generation or up to that. Gets me concerned because we saw how four times frame gen was. How is this going to work for a lot of people out there? This is going to be even weirder because now like what they're showing right here is that you'd be taking a game from 40 FPS, multiplying it by six and going up to 240 FPS, which is insane. And if you were going from a base frame rate of 40 FPS, your latency is probably gonna be too high. It does not feel like a very good gaming experience. Not to mention if you were to start at 60 FPS, your monitor would have to be 360 Hertz for it to even matter. But they're on their freaking website is saying that this is a decent experience or a recommended use case for the scenario. It's not even like it's not cool, but some of the issues with this is it's going to compound the issues that were already there with times four and times three frame generation. It's like, now you need an even higher refresh rate monitor. It's probably gonna demand more load on your GPU and it's gonna push down your base frame rate even more. At least that'd be my assumption, but Nvidia does say, at least with their stuff, that they have improved the model for frame generation. The frame generation model has been continuously fine-tuned for improved quality and stability. And we've improved frame pacing to ensure the high frame rates feel as good as they look. Possibly runs smoother, is less taxing on your system. But technically the model does have some differences in terms of quality. I think mm -hmm. Nvidia isn't talking too much about that. And is better image quality, apparently. Now, as you go up with more and more generated frames, the image quality does start to matter quite a bit. It can actually infect some of your real frames in the game. The game is more fake frames than real frames. The game starts to look not that great at all. But really the claim to fame feature that we're gonna be seeing, Linus even talked about this, that it is more of a stepping stone to something different. Multi-frame gen was just a stepping stone to dynamic frame gen, which legitimately sounds super cool. Because Nvidia is gonna be introducing DLSS 4.5 dynamic multi-frame generation. And this is where things get genuinely pretty damn cool. It can actually mitigate some of the problems with frame generation and possibly something that I could like. A dynamic multi-frame generation, what it's trying to achieve, is you input what refresh rate you're targeting on your monitor. And I think you would be doing this in the NVIDIA driver app or maybe in the game settings when this does roll out into some games. And it's gonna dynamically change how many frames is it generating in order to try to achieve 
around that frame rate. It kind of reminds me of dynamic resolution scaling where you're targeting a frame rate and the resolution is adjusting to achieve that, which usually works pretty good. Now, what's really interesting is we've seen a third party program already do this. I'm back in Black Myth Wukong at 4K cinematic settings on the 5090. Obviously, we're going from four times frame gen, so it's like under 50 up to 200. We have this little program called Lossless Scaling. You guys might have heard about this. It's only $7 on Steam and it's from a complete third party. It can also do frame generation outside of the game, which means we can actually stack it with frame generation inside the game just for shits and giggles. We are now getting some crazy frame rates. Four times multiplier, so we're getting double four times frame rate which is pretty insane. We're generating from like a little under 100 FPS base on top of DLSS frame gen up to over 400 FPS. To kind of show this off properly, let's go ahead and turn off the DLSS multi frame gen inside of Black Myth Wukong. Obviously this program has some problems because this is not directly integrated into the game. So you can't have image quality problems. As you can see, there's some like phasing in and out of existence here, but overall it's pretty neat. And there's an adaptive mode where you can actually set your frame rate target. Let's just say we want to target 120 FPS and we can just generate frames to get and achieve that frame rate. Left side of the screen, we're actually generating from 50 FPS up to 120, which isn't even an even multiplier. Overall, the game looks really smooth on a 120 FPS monitor right now. And we could even change it, say we want to target, I don't know, 240 FPS or something like that. And that's pretty cool. So you just input your frame rate instead of trying to do a multiplier and try to like even up where you're hitting your monitor and try to cap your frame rate or something so you're not wasting frame generation performance. At least when I turn on this adaptive frame generation technology, it feels more laggy than just a multiplier frame rate would be. Now, the problem with the lossless scaling method is it is completely locking your frame rate to 240 hertz in this case. Even though we're generating from like 48, 49 FPS, those don't perfectly align with each other. So like realistically, this is closer to a five times frame generation because you know, five times 50 is 250. Because those don't line up evenly, it's a little bit lower than I'm targeting. That means you actually get worse latency because it has to throw out some of the original frames within the game in order to achieve this locked frame rate that you're targeting. But Nvidia is doing it a little bit differently. Like if you pay attention to the showcases that they've done so far, they're actually only doing multipliers of frame frame rate. If you see in the top right corner of the screen, it says like it's doing two times frame gen, then three times or four times and five times. So it's not trying to lock to your refresh rate. It's just trying to get around that range. So the game feels like a reasonably similar level of smoothness as you're playing, which shouldn't increase your latency that much because it's not throwing out real game frames. But the only other problem is you might still end up generating frames that are above your monitor's refresh rate, which makes them basically pointless anyways. And maybe you could experience screen tearing because you're going above your monitor's refresh rate. But Nvidia is doing a pretty interesting solution here, which I think is overall pretty damn cool because a lot of the times that's what you want with frame generation. You're trying to make the game look and feel smoother and possibly utilize as much of your monitor's refresh rate as possible. But because they're doing it variably here, it can save on some of the performance costs that normal frame generation has because you're not always generating four times frame. You're not hitting your base frame rate nearly as hard, but you're trying to maintain a level of smoothness and appearance for you. Now, while this dynamic frame generation is pretty damn cool, and I think I will like it and maybe use it, especially with a high refresh rate monitor, if you're over 200 hertz, it'd be really nice to be able to achieve that more. This still has its concerns though. Just because you're getting this frame generated performance and you're seeing a similar level of smoothness as you're playing, that does not mean that the game is always going to feel like that level of smoothness. We've already had this problem with frame generation. You know, when you see a frame rate number, how it used to be back in the good old days is, you know, you have a higher frame rate and because you're actually making more game engine frames, your latency would be lower than what it would be without that. You would have a smoother experience because it's a higher frame rate and your latency would decrease. But with frame generation, it looks smoother, but your latency isn't getting better. An issue even with the dynamic frame generation, while it's trying to maintain your base frame rate as much as possible, because you're gonna be targeting a similar level of smoothness, there could be like this dissonance between what you're seeing and what you're feeling. Because randomly the game could dip below a certain point and while the frame generation is pumping out like four times frame gen, 
you know, you're feeling more like 30 FPS latency or 40 FPS latency or something like that. Even though you're, it looks smooth, that doesn't mean it's gonna feel smooth, which is a little bit concerning. From what we've seen with people actually experiencing this right now, like Linus says, he can't really tell. Linus, can you tell at all when it's turning on or off? It's exactly what I'm trying to figure out right now. Okay, here, let's, let's teamwork this. I suspect that right now it is not. It is on. It's on. Damn. Okay, it's definitely off now. Yes. Okay. Did it just transition? I think it just transitioned. I think it's off. It never turned off. Really? Yeah, as far as this thing's reporting. And he did an interesting experiment where it would be the most extreme example because he was playing where it would be no frame generation at times, so you call it one times frame gen or whatever. And then he was using two times frame gen to kick in just to make the game feel smoother. This, well, this one is actually the worst case scenario for this dynamic frame gen. You're gonna have a base frame rate that feels the most responsive at like 90 FPS. And then when it goes to like 120 with two times frame gen, then you're gonna be feeling a significant drop in the base latency of the game because realistically, if you're achieving 120 with that, then you're frame generating from like 60. So the game should feel a lot different, but Linus didn't really feel any issues with this. I didn't notice a difference. <laughs> we'll have to see what it's actually like when we take it under the microscope uh -huh. or also just more time with the game. One thing that we were told very specifically is that if you are dropping due to like varying levels of load, like say one area of a game without frame generation runs at like 200 FPS and you go to another area that runs at 50 FPS, even though you may not see a great difference in fluidity of frame rate because generated frames are actually pretty good, you would definitely feel the difference in real input latency because that is a large difference actually. I'm sure a lot of people will be more or less sensitive to this type of stuff. For me, like latency does bother me quite a bit. I don't really use frame generation that much if it makes the latency too high. And there's also the question if the moment that you turn on dynamic frame generation, are you always gonna be subject to some sort of latency because it has to be ready to turn on frame gen at any moment? Also, the demo at CS was on the 5060 Ti, which is like a mid-tier graphics card, but it was a 16 gigabyte model. And it was able to achieve these dynamic frame generation. So maybe that's a good sign in terms of the performance. What does this mean for the future of performance? That's another one of the big concerns is if you can just click a button and you're getting dynamically generated to whatever refresh rate you want, then it does bring into a lot of questions. How are game latency going to feel? Are devs gonna be optimizing their games? Or are they just gonna rely on this frame generation tech? There's a lot of questions going on. I do think overall it's a pretty interesting technology. While the 6x frame gen <laughs> doesn't seem that useful, dynamic frame gen seems useful if you achieve like 120 FPS. I think I like that overall. So we'll see how that is, but we're gonna have to wait to try it unless you're at CES right now because it isn't launching until spring and whatever time in spring, I'm, I'm assuming this is gonna be like April or May to be honest. And it's only gonna be exclusive to 50 series graphics cards. So if you don't have the latest and greatest from NVIDIA, then uh, you're screwed. Tough luck, buddy. What does suck is that this might be a genuinely useful feature. Normal base frame generation, I wouldn't tell people to upgrade for, but if dynamic frame gen is actually good, then it could be pretty nice, I'm not gonna lie. Now, you can also integrate this into any game through the NVIDIA app, it seems like, as long as it supports some sort of frame generation. I mean, I'm excited to try it overall. I'll also be working on the upscaling video comparing DLSS 4.5. Anyways, that's gonna be it for me. I'm gonna see you guys in the next video. Hopefully, you all have a good one, and peace.